hello guys and welcome to the very first chemistry class on this channel and we are going to be looking at what introduction to what to chemistry all right so in your secondary school because this is a jam class you have been taught chemistry you know what chemistry is so of course I'm go we're just going to refresh your memory again and then we'll look at some other subtopics and then we can now give you an assignment from the O3 School Jam app. Do not forget that this tutorial is brought to you by O3 Schools Jam application, Jam app. So if you head over to Play Store, go and search for O3 Schools. Now 03 is O, letter O, O3 Schools Jam app. And then download the latest version of the app on your phone then proceed to what to activate it of course once you download it you can be able to answer five questions after you have answered those five questions you'll be told to activate mind you all three school jam app is a cbt practice app designed just like the way you see your exam that day it has so many wonderful features it has all past questions for all subjects in one app and of course it has mock exam that you, that will conduct for students every saturday to test app prepare the app for the exam and of course it has a question search feature where you can look for what question under every topic that thought you have what you have studied like the assignments i'm going to give to you after this class will be from o3 school jam app and of course it's we use the question search feature to look for those questions for you to answer so of course download the app from play store there's the pc version if you need the pc version you can send a message on whatsapp zero nine one two one five one five two four six just send a message and say please i need the pc version of course the link for the pc version will be sent to you but if you have an android phone quickly head to play store and download this app right now all right so without further ado know that what the app is not completely free the free feature gives you five questions of course you need to activate this app with just 2500 nera to get full access to everything on the app to all subjects to all features and the activation does not expire once you activate your app it remains activated forever except you decide to delete the app on your phone because once you delete the app on your phone your product key will change so do endeavor to activate your app and follow us in this class all right so let's continue to introduction to chemistry so then what is chemistry of course chemistry is a branch of science it's a branch of science that deals with the composition properties and uses of matter so chemistry is a what is a branch of science that this with the composition that this with the properties and this with the uses of what of matter so because of this simple definition of chemistry we can now tend to say that what chemistry is that branch of branch of science that deals with what it changes with changes in matter so in other words after seeing chemistry is that part of saying that this with the composition properties and uses of matter we can now say in other words chemistry is that branch of science that deals with changes in matter changes in matter we know what matter is matter is anything that has mass and can can and can what occupy space so uh chemistry is that branch of science that deals with changes in matter so of course these changes can be what either physical change physical change or or chemical change chemical change so chemistry is a i'll go over again chemistry is a branch of science that deals with the composition properties and uses of matter and of course we can now say that what well, chemistry is that branch of science that deals with the changes in matter these changes may be what either physical change or chemical changes so now we are going to quickly look at what chemical and physical changes are but from your secondary school definition you have known that what physical change is a change that can be what easily reversed 
easily reversed. Easily reversed. A physical change is a what? Is a change that can be what? That can be easily reversed. And when it is reversed, no new substances are formed. So. But for a chemical chain, it's a what? It's a chemical, it's a type of chain that occurs where what? Reversibility is not allowed. It is not possible to reverse a chemical chain because once you reverse it, once you once you perform a chemical change, what a new substance is what is formed. So I'm going to see examples, but in a broader sense, I'm going to look at the differences between these type of changes. So therefore, chemistry is the branch of science that deals with the composition properties and uses of matter and of course you cannot say chemistry is that branch of science that that deals with the changes in matter these changes may be physical change which can be easily reversed of chemical change which cannot be easily reversed now let's look at it in a broader form the differences between a chemical change and a physical change so what is the first difference we have stated so this is physical change and this is chemical change. So we have stated a word that this in a physical change, it is what? Number one, it is what? It is easily reversed. Reverse. So a physical change is easily reversed, but a chemical change, it cannot be what? Easily what? Easily reversed. So we have known that, we have stated that fact, and we have come to terms with that fact. Of course, but in a physical change, no new substances are formed. So in a physical change, no new substances are formed. But for, in the, for a chemical change, new substances are formed. All right. So we have known this now that for a physical change it is easily reversed and no new substances are formed. For a chemical change it cannot be easily reversed and new substances are formed. Of course, another difference between them is that what there is no change in mass. There's no change in mass of the substances involved in a physical change. Substances involved in a physical change but for a chemical change there is a change in mass change in mass mass of substances involved so i've seen another difference there is no change in mass of the substances was involved Therefore, a chemical chain, there's a change in mass of substances involved. What other thing is there? For a physical chain, there is no obvious change in energy for a what? For a physical chain. For a physical chain, there's no obvious change in energy. But for a chemical chain, it is what? It is accompanied, accompanied by a great change in what in energy so these four differences between a chemical change and a what and a, a physical change must be committed to your memory for a physical change it is easily reversed for a chemical change it cannot be easily reversed for a physical change no new substances are formed but for a chemical change new substances are formed then thirdly there's no change in mass of the substances involved but for a chemical change there's a change in mass of the substances involved lastly there is no obvious change in energy for a physical change but of course for a chemical change it's accompanied by a great change in energy now that we have seen the differences between a chemical change and a physical change we are now going to look at what examples examples of what of physical and chemical changes so of course for the physical changes they are what things that we see in our everyday life examples of physical change let's look at them examples of physical change number one is what the dissolution dissolution of salt in water 
the dissolution of salt in water is a what is a physical change when you put salt into water of course you can evaporate the water and all leave the salt of course that is what that is a physical change of course another example is the the freezing the freezing of ice cream of course it's either you freeze ice cream or what you melt ice cream so the freezing or the melting of ice cream is a what is a physical change so totally another physical change that will occur that you can easily see, see is what the 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 what the magnetization magnetization of ion so when you take a bar magnet and you take a magnet and then you what you take it close to what uh too close to an ion iron rod it's what it's magnetized and you can easily well separate it there's no obvious change in energy right so uh magnetization of ion is another type of what of physical chain what other type of physical chain do we have we also have what the evaporation evaporation of liquid evaporation of liquid from a mixture so, for example, if you have a mixture of sand and water in a bowl, so you can easily what evaporate what the water out, leaving out what the sand. That is what that is a physical chain. Of course, another type of physical chain you have you have the condensation, condensation of water vapor. Condensation of water vapor is another type of what physical change so i talk about was the freezing of ice cream of course can also talk about the melting of ice to water so it's also a physical change the melting of ice to water so these are all examples of what of physical changes there are no obvious change what in energy there's no change in mass of the substances involved and of course they are easily reversed and no new substances are formed so now let's quickly look at examples of a chemical change or example of chemical changes examples of chemical changes so example of chemical changes of course we include number one all right so number one is what the bond the the burning of wood to form ashes so when you burn wood to form ashes so wood has been turned to water ashes another different new substance has been formed so that is what a chemical change so another uh, chemical change we have is the reaction between a metal and an acid so when a metal reacts with an acid you see for example ion fe plus what an acid let's say like acl when they react are going to have fecl2 plus what now plus h2 right so a new substance called ion chloride has been formed uh, is this equation balanced that's the first thing you need to see is it balanced no so you have to balance it if you put two here if you see that what the equation is balanced so ion is reacting with what hydrochloric acid hydrochloric acid so when they react you are seeing that what you are getting what ion chloride uh, ion chloride and what an hydrogen is what dissipated so of course the reaction between a metal and an acid is what a chemical chain also the reaction between a base and an acid so when a base reacts with what with an acid we usually form what salt salt is formed for example if you have NaOH which is a base reacting with an acid HCl of course if you go we are going to have NaCl then plus what plus H2O then of course you can do your balancing so of course this is what so don't my those are reacting with hydrochloric acid a new substance entirely which is what NaCl2 uh, NaCl uh, which is what sodium chloride sodium chloride 
is what is formed. So, of course, when a base and an acid what react together, you see that what a new substance is what is formed. Of course, another one for decay of substances. So, when you leave what a substance to decay, an entire new substance what is form and of course another type of chemical change that, that exists is what the rusting of iron so rusting of iron leads also towards to a change this what to a chemical change because another different what substance what will be formed then the last but not least is the addition it is, is the term we call slaking so take note of this term, slaking, S-L-A-K-I-N-G. Slaking is the addition of quick lime, quick lime to water. So when you add quick lime to water, then that is what, that is slaking, that is slaking. So we'll be able to sufficiently see examples of both uh, physical changes and what, and chemical changes. And now we're going to move to what, to discussing what matter. So basically, matter exists in what? In different states. Matter exists in different states. But of course, in nature, there are three states of matter that are observable in everyday life. In everyday life, three states of matter are observable, which are what? The solids, the what? The liquid, and the what? And the gaseous was state. So these are the three states of matter. They are what obvious are very very observable in everyday life. But there are some other what states of matter that are theoretical. They are theoretical. Example is what is the quark gluon plasma and the Bose Einstein condensate. Condensate, which is the B E C. So of course, these are what, and these are two other forms of what of matter, other state of matter that are what that are theoretical, that are what that are theoretical. And of course, another thing you need to know about matter is that what we can change what a substance from one state to the other. That means a solid can turn to a liquid, a liquid can turn to a gas, from gas to what to plasma, right? And of course, we can reverse the word, the situation. So now we're going to see the relationship between what. The state of matter that what that exists. All right. So when we have a, a solid, have a solid like this. Uh, then this is let's say this is solid. Example of a solid. Then we have what a liquid. So we have a liquid. Don't mind my drawing. So let's say we have a liquid. Then we have what uh gas so we have gas then let's say we now have plasma let's add a fourth one plasma all right this is too big let me reduce it so this is plasma so it has a nucleus of course uh, it has a uh, ions in it so of course these are what the three states of matter, and of course, the fourth one that we're adding, which is what plasma. And we say what matter, we say what substances can change from what from one state to the other. <laughs> so, if a solid is turning to a what to a liquid, what do we call that? A solid is turning to what to a liquid, a solid, liquid, and gas. So, that is what it means. What it is what melting. So, you melt solid to what to become what liquid. Then, of course, if a liquid. Is turning to a gas. What is that called? We call that what evaporation. So that is what evaporation. When a liquid turns to a gas, then of course, when a gas turns to plasma, we call that one what ionization. We call that one ionization. And of course, now, like I said, this process can be reversed. I mean, say plasma can turn to gas. So when the plasma changes to gas, yeah, we call that one the ionization right so of course a gas can also turn to a what to a liquid if a gas turn to a liquid we call that one what condensation condensation so let me write it out better we got our condensation so of course a liquid can also turn to a solid 
and that's what we call what freezing so when we freeze what ah sorry the arrow is wrong so we'll go this direction when we freeze now we're going to have what a solid so apart from this uh observable of observable changes that we have seen there are some other ones that occur a situation where a solid a solid can turn directly to gas so a solid can change directly to a gas that process is called what? sublimation sublimation so sublimation is what is the phenomenon where a solid changes directly to gas without passing through the liquid state it doesn't pass through the liquid state it just changes directly to gas that is what sublimation and of course we also have what the gas turning back to solid without passing through the liquid state so there's another state here we will call that one what deposition so of course these are the state of matter and these are what these are how they can change from one state to another you must commit them to your memory and you must understand them it is not difficult so we are not climbing anything just know that what you make solid to liquid you what evaporate to what a liquid to gas ionization happen from gas to uh, plasma the ionization happen from plasma to gas then condensation happens from gas to liquid then you freeze liquid to get solid and of course a solid can change to a gas and and of course when it turns to a gas that process is called sublimation so of course there are some other important things you need to know about what uh, about this state of matter like a solid a solid has a solid has what a definite shape and a definite what volume so a solid has what a definite shape and a volume so a, def a, a solid has a definite shape and also has what a definite volume of course if i'm moving to liquid a liquid what has a definite volume but it does not have a definite shape a liquid does not have a definite shape but it has what a definite what volume instead so for liquids a liquid let me write it out so that for those of you who want to put something down a liquid what has a definite definite volume but not what a definite shape rather it takes the shape of the container it is in so rather it takes it takes the shape of the container so a liquid has a definite volume but not a definite shape instead it takes the shape of the container so now let's quickly move to gas a gas does not have a definite shape neither does it have what a definite volume so a gas does not have a definite shape or a definite volume instead it takes the shape and volume of what of the container so a gas has no definite shape or volume instead it takes the shape of what of the container it's in likewise also is the plasma state plasma just like the gas has no shape or what or volume so they are able to see what these states are able to what see uh, how they can change from one state to, what, to another we have seen the names of their changes of course the most important one which comes out in jam very well is solid to gas directly which is sublimation let me write this out well for those of you that will see it do not see it sublimation so when what a solid changing directly to gas without passing through the liquid state is called sublimation of course we have seen what properties of what each of what this state of what of matter and of course that will lead us directly uh to uh, discussing this plasma in just little trinklets so examples where we see plasma stage in reality in, uh, example is uh, in sparks in light sparks when light sparks light sparks examples where we see plasma in reality light sparks uh, in fluorescent lights fluorescent light we also see them in neon lights apart from the young lights also see, the, see them was in your plasma television then of course the sun is also uh, another what example so these are what these are these are uh, situations in real life where we would see what 
this plasma state of course in your plasma television which is one you have in your home of course plasma state what is employed in what making what that possible of course so now we're going to move quickly to to physical states in physical states we are going to discuss what the what the movement of what the particles of what the states of matter the movement of the particles of this state of matter so i want to quickly look at that physical state so for a solid for a liquid for a gas for a plasma how do they move how do they move you may be asking yourself ah does a solid move of course the particles of solid also what move right they move but just that they are they vibrate within their world within a limited area so let me just see so for example solid we have what liquid then we have what gas then we have plasma of course so we are discussing what they are what their particles so so this is solid for example so the particles of solid are arranged in regular repeating patterns regular repeating patterns then for liquid of course is more scanty so I have liquid for liquid so for then for gas for gas you see they are more scanty they are very scanty then for plasma then we have what you have your ions inside you have what you have your ions inside then of course you have what your ions inside so this this are what the states of matter so we're looking at what physical states we're looking at physical states so we're looking at what the motion of the particles of what this state of matter so for a solid the molecules of solid the molecules of solids are arranged in regular you can see them in regular repeating patterns repeating what patterns and of course they only what vibrate within a limited area the particles of solid they only what they only vibrate vibrate within a limited area so those are the molecules of what of solid the molecules of solids are arranged in regular you can see regular repeating pattern forget i uh, know my drawing my the, the the illustration is not really really too regular but of course the molecules of what of solids are arranged in what regular repeating patterns those are that is what you want to know importantly and of course they do not move about freely they do not move about freely like the liquid or the gas will do so they only vibrate within a limited area so of course but for a liquid the molecules of liquid are what uh they are, they, are, they move what freely over one another let's look at that the molecules of liquids move freely over one another and uh and when they move over one another they are prevented and they are prevented from flying apart by attractive forces between them so the molecules of liquids move freely over one another and they are prevented from flying apart by attractive forces between them so of course you can see for the molecules of solid no free movement like that they only vibrate within a limited area but for a liquid they move freely over one another but of course they are prevented from, what, from flying apart by what by the attractive forces between them so of course but for a gas <laughs> the molecules of gas fly you have seen gas you see the way gas is right the molecules of gas fly fly in all direction in all directions at great speed at great speed the molecules of a gas fly in all direction 
at great speed. They they fly so much that oh, that the act the, the, of course there is attractive force between them, but because of the way they fly at all direction at and at this kind of and at, and at this kind of speed. And at this kind of speed, the attractive force in between them is almost negligible. We do not even, we do not even see it that well. We do not notice that well, there are attractive forces between them. There is actually an attractive, attractive force between the molecules of gas, but because of what? The way they move about freely and the way they fly in, um, in all directions at great speed, we say that well, the attractive force in between them is, well, is negligible. The molecules of a gas fly in all directions at great speed, so much, so much, much that the attractive forces, city forces between them is negligible. So because of the because of the way they move, right? Because of the way they move, the attractive forces between them is almost not felt. It's almost not seen. It's almost not noticed. So those are the molecules of what of gas, and of course we now go to what plasma. At high temperature of that, at high temperature of stars, the temperature of stars is very very high. The, the stars you are seeing, the temperature is very very high. The minimum temperature, the least temperature of a star is around. 2500 i think around 2400 kelvin to 2500 kelvin that is the minimum temperature of a star and of course it goes as high as what well, 50000 kelvin a very very high temperature a very very high temperature so at high temperature of stars the the atoms lose their electrons so at very high temperature of stars, right? The what the and the atoms what lose their electrons. So when they lose their electrons, they now combine the electrons. Then combine the electrons. Combine with the nucleus to form the what the plasma state, right? So of course, at very high temperature of stars, like I have said, a temperature of stars almost well, 2,500 Kelvin to 50,000 Kelvin. You say what? The electrons combine with what? The atoms lose their electrons first of all, and then those electrons now combine with the nucleus to form the plasma state. So we will be able to what to see uh, a lot about the physical state, and of course, the next thing that will be left for us is to now take question as assignment because if you are listening to this class we are going to see some past questions from jan that have come out under this topic so those past questions will be given to you as assignment because most of them they are theoretical they are not calculations so as time goes on as we double into the calculations in chemistry so then we'll get to ph get to stoichiometry right we are going to do some calculations there and of course then we can be able to do some examples on the board but for now this one that purely theoretical and what you have done in this class has almost been purely theoretical so i'm going to give you questions from the old 3 school jump app so open your app as assignment as assignment open your app right now open your app right now i'm feeling there's something i'm forgetting so okay uh, I think what I'm forgetting is, like I said, we say that a liquid can turn directly to a gas, right? This is a liquid. So, sorry, a solid can what can change directly to gas without passing through the what liquid or state, liquid state. So liquid state will be jump, and we call that process what sublimation, sublimation, and then we say a gas can turn directly to what is solid, and we call that one deposition. So there are examples of substances that what undergo what the sublimation. Example is what uh, menthol. Another example is ammonium chloride. So, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. <coughs> you need to know what the examples of what substances that what that what that can sublime. Yeah, that can sublime. We have what ammonium chlo uh, ammonium chloride. Let me write that. Let me write that out for you. Ammonium chloride. So that is what NH4Cl. Then you have what we have what menthol. Uh, menthol also is another substance that can what undergo sublimation. So please 
put those things to heart and then put them to mind. So um, now next class we are going to be discussing more on what on chemistry. But of course our assignment for today assignment. So we are going to go to download, go to Play Store, download all three schools, jam app. Then use just on the on the first page. Once you launch the app, you see the question search question search future or you can go to utme practice utme practice and then look for the year we're talking about and then answer the questions under them so of course well where, where are those questions uh okay <clears throat> okay yes so yeah it is so i'm going to see uh, number one 2011 number 13 number two 2012 number seven number three 2022 number 16 number four 2006 number 31 and then number five 2009 number two so please just to let you know that questions from what we have just done are repeated in jam every time so please look at these questions this um, um come to terms with them from what we have taught today and then of course you see that was everything works out fine for you all right so this is where we'll stop in this class my name is Olabi Tango and of course i'll see you in the next class thanks for watching